In this episode, I spoke with Jason Vanna, the CEO and founder of Shift Agency for companies who need help with brand marketing and positioning. Jason is also very active on LinkedIn and a great example of consistently building an audience over time. So we're talking all things branding and brand marketing today. In this episode, you will learn what brand actually means, the in-depth process that Jason uses to actually build a brand from scratch for companies, and what a good differentiator looks like, and so much more. So let's dive right into the episode. Let's dive in first by giving people a chance to get to know you uh, before we talk any, any brand marketing, anything like that. So if you wouldn't mind just getting the clip notes of your career, kind of what led you to what you're doing now and the bullet points of, you know, how you focus your time now as a marketer. Yeah. So I've really been in the marketing field ever since I graduated college. I was in advertising sales and moved into managing a student housing complex. It was a little weird, but um, it basically was selling rooms to college students. So it's still kind of marketing. Went from there, started working um, at a community college doing social media, uh, helping with some of their, their graphic design needs and all of that. Went from there, was working at a local church, um, doing a lot of their communications. So building out their new website, social media, internal graphics, like how do we talk about things? How do we schedule announcements, all that kind of stuff. Um, from there, I went to work as head of marketing for a B2B manufacturing company, um, which is where basically I did everything that a CMO does, um, including interior design and uh, also designed and wrote a technical user manuals. Never thought I'd do that as a marketer, but ended up doing technical user manuals. It was kind of crazy. Um, and from there, that's kind of where I started Shift as an agency and Really, I think the whole reason I, I got into this was it, when you look at branding, because really what I do is, is more brand marketing, brand strategy. When you look at branding, it really is identity creation um, and understanding the purpose of why you exist and communicating that in a way that makes people want to buy from you. And all my life, I've been um, like just interested in this idea of identity formation and creation. Like how do you become the person that you become? And really that kind of, that interest is branding to businesses. And so, um, it's really just been a passion of mine, understanding like why people make the decisions they make. Why, why do you choose to become the person you become and, and maybe choose is the right word there, but, um, all of that has been that kind of psychology has been. Uh, an interest of mine and branding really is psychology applied to business, understanding why you exist and that I, that business identity you want to create. Yeah. And I actually kind of want to build on that. Cause I, I was going to ask you kind of your definition of in the simplest terms, what does this actually mean? Because for some yeah. reason or another brand is so hard for us to grasp. It's just like everybody has a different idea of what it means, how you measure it, if you can measure it. It's just like nobody knows what this thing is. So right. like you kind of gave me a glimpse there. I also saw a post you put out recently where you were like, brand's a lot more operations than you actually think. Um, expand yeah. on that a little bit. Give me, give me some more ideas on how we can think oh, about this more clearly. It. Yeah, you're going to get it. Okay. So defining brand, I like to use the definition that Marty Neumeier uses. He's written a lot of books on branding, kind of seen as the godfather of modern, modern brand strategy. It's basically this. A brand is the, the perception that your ideal, or I'm sorry, brand is the gut feeling that, you're, that people have about you, your business, or your product. So really it's not, like I see a lot of companies, a lot of brand strategists, a lot of marketers talking about they're building a brand. And really a brand is something that is owned in other people's minds. Jeff Bezos says like a brand is, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's not something that you control. Like I can't dictate what you say about me. Now I can influence it by how I act, what I say, how, like if I actually live up to what I'm promising you, those kind of things will help. Even how I dress, how I talk, like everything helps build that perception that you have of me. It's the same that's what a brand is, is the perception people have about you. Um, and the reason I say that it's far more operations than marketing is really, if you look at branding, how you build a good brand is how you build like a personal reputation or really how you build your life. 
Um, when you look at people's lives and kind of the, the reputation they have or the perception you have of people, it, it's that old adage of actions speak louder than words. So one of the examples I like to use, I use this on a lot of podcasts, but um, it's with State Farm. Now, I say State Farm. Most people know, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's the brand. That's the perception they want you to have in their minds about them as a company. It's in every ad. It's the jingle at the end of every commercial they run. It's in every newspaper magazine they run. Like that, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. If I say State Farm, you, anyone can really rattle that off. However, I've had an experience with State Farm that negates that brand that they're trying to build. So this house that I'm in, like I don't, uh, without going into all the details, uh, last year, my mom had some health issues, moved back into my childhood home. This is my old childhood bedroom. Looks a little different, but this house has been insured by State Farm since 1960. And then the family, it was my grandparents' home. My mom bought it. Um, so it's been insured by State Farm since 1960. Up until about seven years ago, there were zero claims on that insurance policy. Um, in the last seven years, there's been damage to the roof, damage to the siding, and the hot water heater exploded and flooded the basement. So my mom submitted three claims in seven years, and State Farm said, three claims and you're out. We're not going to cover you anymore. So I don't care how much your website says, your ads say, your jingle says that you're a good neighbor. If it's three strikes and you're out, three, like, uh, imagine, imagine, like, siding is ripped off your house and you need to figure this out and, and your insurance agency is like, yeah, we'll give you the money, but now you have to start shopping around for a new insurance company because you've done too much. We don't want to cover you anymore. If I had a neighbor like that, I would not call them a good neighbor. So branding is just as much what you do, how you act, the policies that are in place in your company. So how you treat your employees, how you treat your customers, how you onboard them and how you offboard them is in like how you deliver whatever it is that your offer is like that is just as much branding as your tone of voice, your colors, your logo, you know, the experience that you want to, you want to provide operations is just as much, uh, branding as anything dealing with Mark, um, because your actions speak louder than your words. So, so when a, a brand comes to you, for example, to but to make their their brand better or to start from scratch or whatever they're doing, I know that every every company is different. So the the strategy right. is custom. I, I get all that. But if if you tried to look at universal principles at at the very least, what are some of the ways you would think through breaking down that term of like building a brand into actionable steps? What are yep. some of the the patterns or the things that you you know for sure you're going to do for most clients that they're not doing or that just have to happen to actually build a brand? Well, we actually do follow a very, uh, I like to say it this way, I productize branding. So I've come up with a system that I run with every single client. It gets me now. Yes, their resulting strategy is going to be different. It has to be. That's, that's what a brand is. It's how you come to the market and how you're different. Um, but there is a process to developing that, that just is based on, you know, basic psychological principles. And so. First thing we do, if, if, you know, Blake, if you were my customer, this is what we would do. Step one is I'm going to do research. This is going to be looking into your, your, not your ideal customers. We're going to look at your competitors. Who are they? What are they doing in the marketing? What do they do well? What do they do poorly? How are they seen in the market? How are they trying to position themselves? And then you and I are going to do a workshop where I'm going to dive into your company. I want to see your offer. I want to see what it is that you're, you're trying to build. If there's like, if you have a, a document, I want to see it. If you have a product, I, I, I want you to show it to me. I, I want to see how it works. I want to poke at it. I want to, I'm going to ask you a ton of questions about it. Um, we're also going to look at your sales process. So how are you attracting clients right now? And what is that sales funnel you take them through? Discovery call to presentation to proposal to what does that look like? And where does that break down? Um, because where it breaks down kind of tells us where there are some gaps in how people see you. So 
that's kind of phase one. And that sets up all the rest of what we do. So the next step, and it just depends on the package that you get, but I'm going to go through the larger package. So next step is going to be about five workshops. And these workshops are going to cover um, your internal brand. So purpose, mission, vision, values. Why do you exist beyond making money? What it, where are you trying to take the business to in the next five to 10 years? What actions are you, you going to commit to, to realize that vision? That's kind of what a mission is. Most people don't understand vision and mission. Mission is not, this is what we're out here to do. Mission is, this is what we're committing to do in order to, to achieve our vision. And then values are, how are you going to act internally? What are going to be those things that every employee, every person on the team is going to hold dear? Like I, I explained it to my clients this way. If you were to, if you've got five values, let's say, and you were to take one away, you're no longer your company. So for us, if we took one of our values away, we're no longer shift. That's what your values should be. Not just, oh, we're going to value communication. It really is what defines you that if I took this away, you're no longer you. So that's internal brand. Then we do ideal customers. Who are they? What's their customer journey? What are their pain points? What are their motivations? What's the ideal state they're after? Dive into them. Then we're going to spend some time in workshop three, diving into your differentiation. What actually makes you unique? Um, I like to describe it this way. That differentiation is why people should choose you. So most companies have no idea what their differentiation is, or they have a very weak differentiation. It's our personality. It's me. It's I'm just being my, it's our team. Those are not differentiators. Um, what we're doing is we're looking at what actually, what is that unique value you bring into the market and what underneath it needs to align to make people feel that differentiation. That's where personality and team and all those kind of things come. Then we're going to work on your brand personality. What are the archetypes that you're going to, you're going to have? What are the, what's the tone and voice of your brand? What are the opinions and points of view that you're going to hold that resonate with your ideal customers? So like here at Shift, um, if you've looked at any of my content, we hate, 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 hate fluffy content, content that like seems good. Like, Hey, here's the 10 things you should do to build your business. And you read it and you're like, that doesn't actually help me. That's kind of common sense or the whole, like, just be yourself and you'll build a brand. Oh, okay. But that doesn't tell me how do I get in front of my ideal customers? That doesn't tell me how to actually write copy. And so fluffy content is something that like our point of view, it's ridiculous and it's stupid. And we say that because that aligns with how our ideal customers feel. They want someone who isn't just going to give them quippy one-liners. They want someone who actually knows what they're doing. So we, we build out those, uh, those points of view and opinions. And then the last step is building out the messaging. Uh, and that's going to be like your main messaging, what's going to be on your website. It's going to be key guarantees, key features, all of that. So we do workshops to run all that in the messaging is also your brand story. And I don't mean your origin story. Here's why we started the company. I mean, what's the story that needs to come through your marketing and your sales and everything that you do so that your ideal customers see themselves in your solution. So we do all that in the mix of all that. We're also coming up with touch points. What should you do in marketing? What should you do in sales? And what should you do in your operations to make people feel this differentiation and feel this brand across every interaction they have from once all that's done, I compile what I call an insights document. It's basically a proof of your strategy. All your messaging is going to be there. All your touch points are going to be there. There's going to be options for you. Like you could go with this tagline or you could go with that tagline. Um, gives the team the ability. Like I, I do not like brand agencies that run workshops and then say, here's your new brand. I am not an expert on your business. I can help you see your business in a new light. I can help you see your ideal customers in a new light. I am not an expert. You are. If I'm going to be building your brand, it's something we have to do together. So I can give you a message, but if you instinctively in your gut, you're like, it doesn't feel like me, then it's not you. And we need to keep working on it. 
So we do that. We meet. Uh, we give you that proof. We meet. We go through everything. This is what I mean when I say this. This is uh, this is this message, and here's how you use it. We walk through everything. Once it's all said and done in your life, Jason, you nailed it. This is me. I love this. We even dive into your offer and like for every client we've worked with, we've redefined their offer and said, Hey, I know you were doing these three things. Now you're only going to do this one because this really aligns. And if you settle on this, you're going to make a lot more money. Um, so all of that is given to the client. We go through it. Once it's finalized, we give them a strategy document with a homepage review. So we take a screenshot of the homepage and say, okay, if this is your new strategy. Here's what needs to change on your website in order for people visiting your website to recognize who you are and how you help them. And then we do a prioritized, uh, I call it a tactical plan, but it's a prioritized checklist. So in this process, we come up with hundreds of ideas. Like for some clients, we're coming up with things that they could do 10, 20 years down the road. Not ready for you yet. It's a great idea, but this is going to cost you $2 million and you're just starting out and you've got a budget of 30,000. You can't do this right now, but here's this awesome idea, something to build for. And then that prioritized checklist is realistically, what should you do now to see a larger ROI on your investment? And what we've seen using this kind of process with our clients is most of them see an ROI within two months. They start generating leads, they generate contracts, we had one client, we weren't even done with her strategy and she landed five new clients during the process of the workshops. Um, because we were coming up with ideas that she just started running with, with prospects and they were like, we love this, let's do it. And now she's like, no, I actually have to do it. I need to, I need to fulfill this. And this was just an idea at first. And so um, that's kind of the, the process we take through. It's a lot of, I always tell all my clients, we're going to do these workshops and you're going to feel two things. You're going to come in the here. You're going to leave the workshops and you're going to feel like, holy crap, this was amazing. I saw my business in new light. I came up with a bunch of new ideas, but I have no idea where to go from here. We didn't nail anything down. We didn't finalize anything. It doesn't feel like I have a finished strategy yet. And, and those workshops are really insights gathered. I want to, we want to poke at stuff. We want to, we want to say, okay, this is your offer. Why, why are you doing it this way? Could you do it this way? What about this idea? So like for one client, um, we just did their internal brand, um, we, or no, we did their customer workshop yesterday. And one of the ideas that came out was putting up a show, um, it in their industry, no one has a show. None of their competitors actually have something where you can come and see their products, see how they develop strategies and whatnot. What not. And we spent about 30 minutes coming up with ideas of like how to use that showroom and, and even coming in from an educational standpoint, like how can you do it through marketing and not just a sales showroom to here's the robot, here's how it works, but more of a, an experience. How do you get key influencers of industry in that space? How do you um, get high school students in that space and provide some, even they're looking at a, uh, like a certification course for people who want to be in engineering and stuff. And I was like, this would never come out if we wouldn't have poked and prodded and, and questioned what are your competitors not doing that we could do in such a phenomenal way that your competitors look at you and be like, holy crap. Why did we not do this? Like we're already behind because we don't have it. And so that's kind of the process we, we go through and it is built. Um, it has turned, we typically work with, uh, kind of startup or challenger brands. They're new to the space. They've got a new idea. They really want to stand out, but they just don't know how to do it. And so we take those challenger brands and most of them, um, I mean, it takes time to accomplish this. So I say most of them just because some of them we've only worked with for a few months. So it, it's not, they haven't been doing this long enough yet. But um, the ones that, you know, were a year ago or even just like six months ago, they're starting to become top of their industry using those strategies because it's very based on human psychology. 
How do people think? How do they feel? How do you get them to actually like you and say, you know what, Blake, I'm looking for the offer that you provide and no one else. I'm looking at you. I don't care about any, like most of my clients, when they come to me, say that you're the only one I looked at for branding. I don't care about anyone else. You're the one I want to work with. And that's what we help our clients achieve is getting to that place where it's you or it's no one, because I really want to work with you. And branding is like super rigorous, more rigorous than I think we think. We think it's like all just, yeah. oh, it's a tagline. It's the tagline in my colors and my logo. So it's, it's a lot more than that. Uh, last it last is. question here. And then before I give you a chance to kind of talk through what you're building right now, but last question on the differentiator side, which you brought up, any quick examples of brands that have a very clear differentiator that you just really like? Because I, I know yeah. that... You know, you'd mentioned there, there are a lot of weak differentiators where people will talk about, okay, well, it's, uh, it's a little cheaper. It's like, well, maybe that's not, not the most compelling thing, a little compelling, or maybe the differentiator is the team or, or whatever. But what are some strong differentiator examples from brands that people know that you actually really like? So these might not be from brands people know. Um, I'm actually going to tell you uh, differentiators from brands that we've kind of helped uncover because I think that... Um, one, I could use Apple, I could use Nike, like, but um, I think these are going to be a little bit more relative to B2B companies. And so uh, one company we worked with was a communications agency, works with nonprofits to really help them understand how to communicate their mission vision. So they get more funding, they get more people in the programs, all that kind of stuff. She was a solopreneur, did this for a nonprofit, branched out, kind of worked on her own and did what most first-time founders do. I can do everything. I know, I know communication strategy. I'm going to be, I can do content strategy, content creation. I can do a comm strategy. I can be a, a fractional CF or a fractional communications officer. I can do it all. I can do thought leadership. And like the list of services was probably 20 long. And I was like, you're never going to stand out for this. So we dove into why do people choose you? And what, what we found out. And I was like, why? Why were you, was this not like bold on your website? What she does is comes into nonprofits, helps them understand their, like she has a journalistic discovery process. She was a journalist. So she really uncovers like the deeper side that most marketing agencies just don't like. So she dives into the nitty gritty, builds out a strategy, but then what she does is connects them to other organizations and individuals who can give their organization of visibility boost. So for example, she was like, I've worked with three political nonprofits that I've connected to Kamala Harris. So tell me you're a nonprofit looking for a comms agency that says I can connect you with the VP of the United States of America. And you would even consider going with any other comms agency. You, you would be foolish to do that. And so that was her differentiator. This like, we're going to connect you to people that really like just take your nonprofit and bring it way up here. Like um, Aspen Institute, there was one, one of her clients where they were launching a documentary and she was like, yeah, I can write some social media posts for you like every other cons agency can. Or I can get a bunch of influencers in the room to the true times to watch your documentary and then write articles about it, write their own social media posts about it, get you into magazines, get you into to like blog sites and all that kind of stuff. And the client was like, I'll write my own, I'll write my own like social media content. You do that. You, you get my, you get my documentary seen by influencers who are going to promote this beyond what I could do. And when that uh, documentary launched, when it finally went live on, on Vimeo, they had like 10 million views within like the first week. You're not going to do that with just social media content. So that was kind of her, her differentiator. Uh, we worked with a recruitment company and he, it was really just a, a quick, like clarity call with him. I just want one hour of your time. Let me pick your brain. He's like, I just don't understand like what to tell people. And we dove into, I was like, walk me through your process. What do you do? And he said something in there that I was like, this is, this is your message. They provide all of their clients two qualified candidates in 10 business days as recruitment work. He was like, that's, yeah, that's just something we do. And I was like, 
something you do. That's everything. Build your entire brand around the fact that you're going to provide two qualified candidates within 10 business days. What, what company looking for like a new CEO or a new VP of marketing or, you know, this kind of executive level wants to spend two months trying to find a qualified candidate? They want them yesterday. So if you can make that promise and live up to it, that's, that's huge. Um, we're working with one client right now that does IOT work. They, uh, it's kind of remote monitoring. So if you've got a piece of equipment in the field, they can pull in the data and, and see like, you know, send alarms of something broken and whatnot, but any IOT company can do that. What they do differently is that not only will they give you the dashboard to say, oh, hey, this is broken. They will give you a legitimate business action to take. So for instance, if you're a, a supermarket and you've got their sensors on all of your stocked items and one of your stocked items is out of stock, it will print out a pick list for your employees and says, these are the items that need to be stocked right now. So it's not something you have to check a dashboard. It's not something that you're like, okay, this is low. What does that mean? And if the system sees that it's low continuously, it will prompt your purchasing department to buy more so that it's helping make those business decisions for you so you never run out. Things like that, or um, they even help with like, you know, those ice machines you see at, at gas stations where you just put in the bag and you fill up the ice yourself. Um, they have sensors in some of those where it's like, okay, there's not enough bags. So their system that creates the, uh, the delivery schedule for your service and support team. So your service and support team knows these are the 10 units I need to, to see today. Here's the best route to see them. So it saves time, it saves gas, it saves, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I can make sure that it never runs out. That's a huge differentiator. And so it's, it's often, I, I tell most of my clients. It is often something you're already doing that is normal to you, but is abnormal in the market. And the problem is for most business owners, because it's so normal to them, they don't see it as a differentiator. So that's when they turn to things like, oh, it's my team. It's my, it's my personality. It's all that. Well, personality and team are great, but personalities change, teams change. Like if that's your differentiator. That's not good. Now, the only time I would say that your team can be a differentiator, but even that I wouldn't, I would never classify it as team. We've got one client where, um, it's not really their main differentiator, but it's one of the key differentiators in their business is that instead of hiring outside salespeople, they hire application specialists. So they're not out there peddling product to you. They're coming into your facility seeing what's working and what's not working and actually giving you educated, um, like it's for a, a food processing equipment manufacturer. So their sales team can go in and be like, well, your recipe is wrong. This is why you're not getting the yields that you want. And you don't really need a new piece of equipment. You just need to reconfigure this recipe for the product you're doing. No other sales team can do that. None of them, no other of their competitors are hiring those kind of specialists. So even then though, I tell them it's not your team. That's the differentiator. It's the fact that you're hiring application specialists and make that clear. Don't just say, oh, it's our team. That means nothing to me as an ideal customer. But if you tell me your sales team are application specialists and they can help me figure out my problem, well, I will call up that sales team and have them come in tomorrow where the, the other guy that's just coming in, like, here's our slicer, buy our slicer. I'm going to look at it and be like, get out of here. You don't, you can't really help. So that's what a differentiator really should look like. Something that your ideal customers or your competitors can't do. They don't have the money. They don't have the infrastructure. Um, they don't have the uh, ability to do it. They don't have the, the knowledge to do it, the expertise to do it, or they won't do. It's so contrary to who they are. It's not something they're willing to invest in. They might be able to, but they've decided that's just, that's not us. We're not going to do it. We're not going to put the money towards that when we can put the money towards this. If you can find that thing, that 
makes for a great differentiator. And you wrap all your branding and marketing around that, people will know within three to seven seconds of being on your website, why they should buy from you. And if they know that, you eliminate the competition out of their mind. So much gold here. I, I appreciate all your time. I, I appreciate yep. the, the examples and everything as well, making this really tangible and tactical. Um, as, as we wrap up here, I do want to give you a chance really quick to just share where people can find you, what yep. you're working on, and, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, so I run Shift Agency. We are a brand positioning agency. Best places to find me, LinkedIn. I create content there every Monday through Friday. It's all very practical, like what we did here in the, the podcast, um, teaching you how to build your brand and create content that takes your brand and puts it in front of your ideal customers. I also send out an email every Monday, which is basically, if you like my LinkedIn content, it's like my LinkedIn content on steroids, more examples, uh, more teaching, more understanding around brand. And then we have a ton of free guides on our website. You don't even have to give me your email. You can just go there and download it. Website is shift.marketing or wow, shift.agency, shift without the I, S-H-F-T dot agency. All of our free stuff is on there to help you grow your brand.